This, this is, is going to be, be so, so awesome. awesome. We've, We've got, got, I've got, I've got a whole... Oh, stop that. <laughs> Always jibber-jabbing. Good, jibber-jabbering. Good morning. I'm just getting my setup here. That is not today's stream. Live now. Click on that. And turn that right off. Now. There we go. So I got audio confirmed. Good morning. It is July 1st again. July 1st seems to come so quickly every year. Well, so does June 30th and June 20th. The years are going just faster and faster all the time. I see the chat room is telling me I got AVDR, all that stuff working good. And today is Windows Daily number eight, swap file, hyper file, and page file dot sys number one, because we kind of touched into that yesterday. And I realized, wait a minute, I got to get a little fresher on this because I, I, I kind of misspoke yesterday. I'm going to go bring up the Microsoft Word document and catch up on things that came through yesterday. So yesterday, Windows Daily number seven, Task Manager five from the chat. Londog says, remember the 1.5 times the amount of RAM installed. Okay, but... My computer has 256 gigabytes of RAM. So 1.5 of that, that's not the size of, of my swap file or whichever file it is. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, try that calculation when you have 256 gigabytes of memory. That doesn't, that, I think that was kind of a rule of thumb and maybe it's a little bit obsolete. I'm not sure. So as I currently run 16 and a number was interesting. Uh, ran from ran Israel. The primary paging file is pagefile.sys, the biggest one. And that was uh, the biggest one. I'm going to go show some documentation about that today that clarifies the distinction between those three files. Because I remember when Windows 10 came along, I, I was scratching my head a little bit, never really did focus on it. Why are there three of these uh, files? And let's see here from Londog. Do you remember, Doug, the clever reason for instituting the function of virtual memory? This really goes back in computer history. Well, not crazy far back. So I'm not sure what reason that you're referring to. A clever reason? Well, basically it was that you, these programs are so big, we load them into memory and run out of physical memory. And so we swap whatever program you're not using right now to virtual memory on the drive. Uh, there's some other related things that I think we'll get into in a, in a few moments here. Ran Israel, I actually don't know what swap file does. We should be clarifying that today. From BH Ringer at 2 Lawn Dog, Mauer Hunting, Mark Rusinovich, and Sys Internals. He gave us a link here for that. And I'm going to go, uh, let's see, let's copy that and paste that into uh, chat so that this is today's chat, right? You know what? I don't, I think that is obsolete. I don't think it caught up. Okay, so here, we'll paste it into here so that if anyone wants to go watch that. And I started watching it uh, yesterday and you're going to see a little bit of that today. Then Wintermute swap file is for hibernation when Windows hibernates memory saved swap file. I don't think that's quite right, Wintermute. It's hyperfile. Uh, dot dot sys and we're going to go take a look at that so let's come over here to this monitor i punched the wrong button there momentarily so here i have the three files highlighted hyper file sys page file sys and swap file sys hyper file sys is clearly the largest of them and that's for hibernating and page file sys is virtual memory when you're when the computer is swapping out program that you're not actively using right now to make room for the program you are using right now. And then swap file sys, which I just read about. Did I read about it yesterday or this this morning? Anyway, I wanted to go search for these three. And how do I find that? Well, I want to show a technique here that I use. I use uh, copy and paste a lot. So I single click on this file name so it's highlighted and then control C to copy that. Now you could go over to your browser now and paste that, but if you're using um, 
clipboard history, here's the easier way. So here I'll do control C to copy page file, and then I'll single click and then single click again to get swap file highlighted and control C. Now bring a browser up into a new tab and bring that up on screen so you can see it. So I'm going to do Windows key V and then click on the first of those three, space bar, Windows key V, click on the second one, Windows key V, click on the third one. Now you saw it, I should have done a space there between those two. You saw it auto populate all three of them when I did the first one. That's because I recently searched that. But the first time I did this, it did not auto populate. So I pasted the first one, space bar, paste the second one, space bar, paste the third one and press enter. And that's by doing Windows key V for pasting instead of control V for paste. Now the first time you do that, it's gonna ask if you wanna turn on clipboard history. So here we get a hit on that. I'm gonna right click, open a new tab, and I think this is the one that I've already looked at, yeah. Windows operating system contains several system files and it's dealing with those three in this. Hyperfile sys is used to support hibernation. And when you have hibernation and fast startup enabled, it, it explains that it'll be three quarters of your RAM in Windows 7. When I saw that, I went and did the calculation. I said, no, that's not right on my computer. Well, my computer's not Windows 7. Windows 11 and 10, it's 40%. And that is approximately the size of the hibernation file for, for me with uh, the 256 gigabytes RAM. So if you come back over here to, I'm gonna come back over here to monitor number three, and you'll see that 107 gigabytes is approximately 40% of the 256 gigabytes. Coming back to this article. Yeah, uh, you will find a cipher roughly equaling, let's see, in case you have hi hibernation disabled, you will find its size roughly equaling your RAM, meaning a higher number. That's a head scratcher. Why, if you disable hibernation, would that file be larger? I have disabled hibernation on computers in the past in order to get rid of that hibernation file on drives that are low on free disk space you know waiting for an upgrade perhaps to a larger drive but that's one of the techniques that i would use to save a large amount of uh, space and i think when i would do that i'd have to disable hibernation there's a few steps to do that i'm not going to go into in this video i think i've done it i think i've explained it before but then i believe you have to restart the computer and then go delete that hibernation file and i'll i don't think you can delete it until you have disabled it I'm telling some more stuff here about what that file uh, contains. There's some information about using Ultimate Windows Tweaker to disable it. I didn't mean to click on that. Just go back. Uh, I, I like to disable it using the Windows techniques for doing that rather than using utilities. I don't like to use utilities unless they're doing something for me that I cannot do through the operating system. Remember, this will disable fast startup too. I commonly disable fast startup because with SSDs and NVMEs, fast startup just doesn't really make the computer start that much faster at all. On a spinning hard drive, yes, it does. So then here's page file is the file that your computer uses as virtual memory. Page file sys holds objects in an overused memory that has not been accessed for a long period of time. I think that's a poor wording there. It's kind of cumbersome to understand the verbiage there, but it's basically programs that you're not using right now can be swapped out to uh, the page file, or otherwise known as virtual memory. Uh, when, do, when Windows runs out of physical memory, it resorts to using the page file, providing some of the contents. Now, let's get down here. Delete page file, clearing the page file on every shutdown. This will be a security thing. If you work on confidential documents and you shut your computer down, a knowledgeable technician could take that hard drive from your computer and access that page file to be able to view the confidential files you've been working on. So this is about how to configure your computer so it automatically clears the page file every time you shut down the computer. Then we get to swap file. So 
in earlier versions of Windows, you had swap file sys, or the swap file holds objects that have been ejected memory, not expect to be accessed for some time. Now, when you first read that, you might say, wait a minute, didn't we just have that? Wasn't that what page file was? Yes, it was. This is talking about earlier versions of Windows used the file called swap file.sys. So a technician who hasn't read up on this and their mind is in Windows 7 and prior might be saying, no, no, swap file is the one that's used for virtual memory. Not anymore. It's not. So we get down to here to find out what swap file is actually used for now. The swap file is not used in the fast startup process, Windows 10 or 11. That's the hyper file sys, which stores the kernel system and comes into play. Windows 11, 10, you again get swap file sys, meaning that file name has come back to us. The latest version of Windows has both the swapping file as well as the paging file at the same time. It's around 256 megabytes in size. And mine looks like 16 megabytes. Why do we need another virtual page file in Windows 11.10? The swap file sys in Windows 11.10 is a special, tape of, a special type of page file used internally by the system to make certain types of paging operations more efficient. It's used to suspend or resume UWP Windows applications, specifically UWP. With the introduction of the UWP app, we need a way to manage their memory outside the traditional virtual memory page file method. With that, system drive swap file was born or reborn. Windows can efficiently write the whole private working set of the suspended UWP app to disk in order to gain additional memory when the system detects pressure. Okay, I've probably gone deep enough into that beyond what many of the people who watch these videos care about. I wanna go show a couple things that are somewhat related to this. We saw the hybrid file, it's clearly the largest. Page file, that's the one that does virtual memory. And then swap file does the UWP. In Task Manager, when you're on the Memory tab, the Performance tab on the Memory section, down here, Page Pull and Non-Page Pull, I believe. <laughs> and, and part of this whole series of videos is for some of you knowledge, knowledgeable people to add your comments or correct me on things, and this is very much a learning exploration for me as well. But Page Pull and Non-Page Pull, I believe, to be associated with Page File. Dot sys. So I'm going to show what this is on a few different computers of mine. This is what we're seeing on Big Beast. Now let me switch to Baby Beast. Here I have my remote connection software on display, but I'm going to bring a task manager on Baby Beast. That task, which wrong keyboard, that task manager that you saw there was for one of the remote computers I'm connected to. When I look at the memory tab there, that one's showing page pull 1.0 gigabytes, non-page pull 581 gigabytes. I'm going to minimize that and then bring up, let's take Braden's computer. First, I'm on the memory page there. His page pull is 240 megabytes, 248 megabytes, and his non-page pull 361 megabytes. I think, I suspect, kind of like to clarify this, I think this has to do with the amount of content in memory that is currently stored on the in in the virtual memory and the and or the non page pool is the part of the memory that could be swapped out to the virtual memory something along those lines I think is the explanation for that so I am curious for those who are interested to help me refine that by making comments in chat or in the comments on the video afterwards, if you go do some research on this subject, if you put in a link that takes me to it, uh, that would be great. I'm going to restore down on Braden's computer and go to my laptop that's in the kitchen. This is what the memory page shows there. And on each of these in the upper right corner, you can see how much total memory that computer has. So here we have page pull at 732 megabytes and non-page pull at 419 megabytes. And these computers all have a different state right now. This laptop we're looking at right now, it has been on for multiple days and has not been restarted. 
Braden's computer was restarted this morning before this live stream. Baby Beast has not been restarted for at least several days. And what else was I connected to? That, uh, oh, Big Beast was last restarted maybe a couple days ago. So that's the background there. I think I'm getting to the end of what I wanted to do for today. So I'm go. oh, by the way, on the background here, you see that I was watching that video, Malware Hunting with Mark Rosinovich and Sys Internal Tools. I was excited to see that it was posted July 22nd, but then less in less excited when I realized, oh, that's from Tech Ed in it was in May of 2014. So that that video is a little bit old. Now I need to come back to monitor one and bring up chat and get an idea of how much is going on here. Oh, here's another thing that I noticed. This was odd, totally off topic, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it is I've done the alt tab on Big Beast and I've noticed Bring it up again. Where's my mouse? Oh, it's on the other monitor. I noticed that when I, I was trying to get back to my Google Chrome, and I thought it was this one, but when I click on this one, it actually brings up Edge. Well, it turns out that Microsoft Edge, because it considers itself to be the boss of the Microsoft browser environment, <laughs> it shows an Edge thumbnail here, and it shows a the YouTube tab on the Edge browser and this YouTube tab on the Edge browser and this one. So it shows all of its browser tabs. Whereas for Google Chrome, I only get one uh, item here on Alt Tab. So I click on that and I want to get back to chat. I think, didn't I already separate chat out? No, I guess I didn't. I think I, I, I had to reattach it. So here I'm going to go look at that's not today's video. It's over here. There it is. Okay, pop out chat, make it bigger so I get an idea of what's going on in chat. There's some uh, there's some lengthy comments there. I'll go read them later. Thank you, Tony Wallow, for the dollar ninety nine super chat that came in before I started the live stream. It's a good reason for me to come back here to the chat because I forgot to mention that. So that's it for now. I hope that's been useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.